Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Friday, October 5th, 2012. We begin with news from the world of chemistry, with a discovery from an unlikely source. Most people would agree cancer research is a good thing. Cancer is a major health issue and finding treatment is important. But just in case the goal of curing cancer wasn't incentive enough, that research may have non-medical benefits as well. Researchers from the Duke Cancer Institute have discovered a potential new way to produce nylon. Now that might not sound like a big deal, but it's used in things other than stockings. More importantly, the discovery was directly about a nylon precursor called adipic acid. This chemical is currently synthesized from petrochemicals and its production releases pollution. You're probably wondering how cancer research relates to this in any way. Well, it turns out an environmentally friendly production process is being investigated for adipic acid. It starts with simple sugars and uses a series of enzymes like an assembly line to produce the useful chemical. But one enzyme was missing because it couldn't be produced. Cancer can sometimes result in mutations that alter enzymes and their function, which is what the researchers found when studying certain types of brain cancer. They applied these functional mutations to similar enzymes from bacteria and yeast. As sometimes happens in science, an amazing coincidence happened. Altering those enzymes created the missing piece needed for adipic acid production. This demonstrates the potential for cancer research and the mutations involved as avenues for the development of useful processes. For this particular process, the next step is scaling up the reaction. Not a simple goal, but one with tremendous environmental potential given the many uses of this nylon precursor. Our final story comes from the world of material science, interestingly, as it applies to plant biology. A difficult part of studying plant physiology is studying the roots because, well, they're underground. But that might not be an issue anymore because scientists in Scotland have developed a soil-like material that is transparent. That might not sound very exciting, but it really does have a number of useful applications we'll discuss in a little bit. First, let's get into what this artificial soil actually is. The main component are tiny pellets of a material called naphion, which is used in fuel cells for its ability to control the flow of ions. Next, the pellets are saturated with a specialized solution and together they roughly mimic normal soil chemistry. One of the reasons naphion was used is because bacteria can grow on it, which brings us to one of the uses of transparent soil. Studying how plants interact with soil bacteria is important, not only normal symbiotic relationships, but also harmful ones. For example, scientists studied fluorescent E. coli to see how it behaves in soil and might contaminate food. They're also studying the roots themselves, such as rapidly screening plants for optimized root structures. Understanding why certain plants do better in the same conditions could lead to better plant breeding or genetic engineering. Ultimately, this transparent soil will be a valuable tool for plant scientists, and hopefully lead to many useful discoveries. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing, and be sure to check the links in the video description.